Hello, kitties. It's terrible triple feature time once again, and this week we're talking about my favorite kind of thing, horror movies. This week's theme is we're supposed to be sympathizing with whom? That's right. Horror movie. We're looking at horror movies and sequels that uh, try to get you, the audience, to sympathize with your with the bad guy. Pro tip: Never try to do this with your horror movie. It, it's confusing for the audience, uh, mixes up your message, and by and large, it's just dumb. If you guys are worried about spoilers, get off the Terrible Triple Fe Feature train now because this review, this uh, video is going to be full of them. Uh, our menu includes uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Texas Chainsaw 3D, and the uh, 2010 remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. We're going in order of uh, ascending. What the fuck were you thinking? Rob Zombie's Halloween is the, uh, the least offensive in that. We get more of Michael's backstory. In John Carpenter's original, Michael was just pure, unadulterated evil as Donald Pleasance explained ad nauseum. Uh, we see, he's introduced um, about like eight, seven or eight years old and is already just murdering people. And no explanation is ever given. And uh, another pro tip for aspiring horror movie writers, not explaining things makes things scarier. I mean, Michael Myers, he just is a murderer. That's just it. There's no explanation for it. And this is scary. Rob took a different approach. He gave Michael Myers an extended backstory where we see his hideous home life uh, chock full of, well, uh, in her defense, a very likable Sherry Moon zombie, actually. Uh, a detestable William Forsyth and a fairly annoying older sister combined with annoying people at school. And all of this were external factors which played a major role in uh, activating his dormant psycho killer genes. Uh, or as a Michael McDowell, Sam Loomis would say, a perfect storm of psychosis. And uh, as a result, he grows into the Michael Myers we know and love. And, you know, I would, I, I would say it detracts from the film, but it's done in such a way that it adds a tragedy to it in that this whole family is destroyed by this one kid being crazy. And... It sort of works. Uh, they're heavily divided. Uh, people are heavily divided on Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, a lot of people hate it. I'm in the camp that enjoys it. I also enjoy John Carpenter's. But um, I think it works. And at the end of the day, having an origin story, you never sympathize or like Michael enough that uh, you don't really want him to die by the end of the film. He, you know, it doesn't detract from any of the horrible things that he does. It just gives something more of a reason for it. Like I said earlier, not knowing is scarier, but uh, a guy basically tearing your house apart trying to kill you is still pretty freaky. So it still overall works. You're never left go asking, what am I looking at in this film, as you will in the other two? Texas Chainsaw 3D is a splinter sequel slash reboot of Toby Hooper's original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, there were two sequels to that one, Texas Chainsaw 2 and Texas Chainsaw 3, and then a uh, Texas Chainsaw, The Next Generation, which Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey would really, really appreciate if you never knew about. But guess what? You can go and rent it. It's so bad. The most recent Texas Chainsaw movie, Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh, attempts to be a sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw uh, and ignore all the sequels, kind of like how uh, Return of the Living Dead is a sequel to Night of the Living Dead that ignores all of George Romero's other films. So, 
we get to see all of Leatherface's family get horribly massacred in the beginning of Texas Chainsaw 3D. They are burned alive in their own house, and uh, one infant manages to escape. Like, she doesn't crawl, she just, the mother, you know, crawls, and one of the asshole uh, posse steals her and raises, the, raises her as his own. And she uh, somehow also Leatherface escaped. I mean, the whole... You gotta love this movie. The whole point of the burning down the house sequence is to get Leatherface, and they managed to not do it. So Leatherface has been living in the basement of, I assume, the, the, the matriarch on his mother's side. And um, this whole time. The matriarch, played by a fairly off-screen Veronica Cartwright, I believe, uh, dies and leaves everything to the infant, this girl with, uh, you know, very, very tiny waist. Um, she goes to inherit the house, but of course doesn't read the letter that the matriarch had left for her, so she doesn't know that Leatherface is living in the basement and is going to be really pissed off if he doesn't get his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with the crusts cut off. It's an actual thing. So... He doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know what's going on. Now, one could say, you know, they're both in the same boat, except one's a seven-foot-tall homunculus with a, le with a uh, ch uh, chainsaw and a flesh fetish. So I think he's winning in that he kills all of her friends. And it gets kind of confusing because the police are still trying to cover up what they did and or they think they were in the right, you know, ignoring due process and just burning a family alive. So that by the end of it, you're really, it's, it's confused. Because you're not supposed to be rooting for Leatherface, except that they turn the whole movie into something akin to Beauty and the Beast. And that doesn't make any sense, because it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, you're supposed to sympathize with this family. Oh, man, their rights were stomped on when this posse of revengers burned them alive. You know, let's not forget that they were killing people and eating them. They were serving them up in chili. I, 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 that said, it's a fairly entertaining film. I enjoyed it a lot. There was a lot of good gags, and the 3D was used to great effect. And once you get past the whole... I don't get it, Factor. It's really a lot of fun. You're never supposed to sympathize with Leatherface. He's, he's wearing the face of a man that he just killed. How are you supposed to look at him as a sympathetic, misunderstood monster? <laughs> oh, God. See, now, Leatherface, you can at least say... He's mentally challenged and or un out of control. The real what is what is going on film of this triple feature is the remake of A Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street, which tries to get you for a large portion of the film to sympathize with Freddy fucking Krueger. Now, for those of you who've been living under a rock and or just don't know who Freddy Krueger is. Freddy Krueger was a child murderer and more than likely molester, but, you know, they play that fact down, who avoided a lengthy jail sentence and or execution through a legal technicality and then was burned alive by the parents of the kids that he murdered. But then Freddy felt like he got a bum deal and came back for supernatural revenge. Freddy is what we like to call one of the worst human beings who have ever lived in film. He's fictional. And, yeah. and yet in the remake for the Nightmare on Elm Street, through the majority of the film, there is a mystery. The, uh, the two main characters, played by a uh, very boring and bored Rooney Mara, and um, 
God, I can never remember his name. He was Bart Allen on Smallville, so I always try to give him a pass, because Lash fans forever. They're trying to find out what actually happened in their preschool, and most of the time, they assume that Freddy Krueger was wrongly killed, and that their parents are the jerks. So, you would think you were presented with the idea that Freddy is getting his justified revenge on these people. Till they eventually find his little furnace room where he raped and murdered children because he's Freddy Krueger. That's what he does. These are slasher movies. The victims are supposed to be innocent. In general, it, slasher movies, it, it's stupid because they have a very ham-handed morality where if you do anything that your parents wouldn't like you to do, you die. But really, nobody should get murdered for these things. That's why the murderers are unrepentant, uh, irredeemable assholes. What are you doing with these movies, guys? It doesn't make any sense to me. But I find it really funny, which is why I've gotten so animated in this one. I'm sorry, but... How are you supposed to sympathize with Freddy Krueger for any part of any movie? He, raped, he designed the glove to torture people better. And then he thinks he should come back for revenge. I mean, he's the worst human being. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so those are three movies where we're supposed to sympathize with who <laughs> featuring michael myers and rob zombies halloween leatherface in texas chainsaw 3d and freddy krueger in the 2010 remake of nightmare on elm street <laughs>